Hey guys, this is Justin. Hello and welcome to another video. We've got an amazing, amazing one today because I am sharing probably the coolest Star Wars fan film that I have ever seen. Definitely the most fun one. It is called X-Wing by Noble Engine here on YouTube. Only 48 subscribers. Right now I'm catching this fan film as it has only about 500 views. This thing is going to absolutely blow up and I want you guys to be a part of it. Um, I actually talked to the creator of this fan film, Chris Parks. He reached out to me uh, right as the fan film was releasing and just to see if I was interested. And yeah, I am. So alongside this reaction, I've got some cool behind the scenes stuff that I'm going to show with you guys. Kind of some comparisons between what the scenes looked like as they're being worked on. Better look at some of the animation, some of the work in progress stuff. It's all going to be really cool. Uh, with that being said, though, I'm going to restart this fan film. I'm going to put on a little bit of audio. Not too much though, because there are Star Wars songs, Star Wars themes used in this, and I will get my video taken down. They seem to be hitting larger YouTubers pretty hard right now. Uh, I'm going to link to, of course, the entire fan film in the upper right corner and down in the description. I'm also going to cut out the coolest part of the video because you guys need to see it on your own. If you're a Star Wars X-Wing fan, uh, fan of the novels that is you may be guessing where this is going but for everyone else trust me when i say it's worth it all right and i'll also have a little bit of trivia about the fan film at the end that i want to share with you guys me and chris had a conversation he's a cool guy a uh, lot of cool information about this fan film so for those who don't know in star wars legends the new republic launched an attack on the imperial held coruscant this is a sort of alternate history version of them. The main fighters that we're fi uh, following here are Wraith 1 and 2 of the famous Wraith Squadron. Now, in reality, in Star Wars Legends, they weren't formed until after the Battle of Coruscant, but well, I'll talk about that later. And the Battle of Coruscant also plays out slightly different in the, uh, in the books, but this is an awesome, really incredible reimagining of the event, and hopefully Michael Stackpole sees it at some point. One thing that I really like that this film does is capture the real speed of Star Wars space combat, especially when paired with the asteroid chase music uh, that you'll hear too. The beginning, you know, it looks kind of generic. Oh, they're fighting through clouds, but this moment is really where, in a second, I knew this fan film would be something special. They come through the clouds, fly through the logo, and I love how, for a second after they pass through the clouds here, it takes your eyes a minute to adjust and really figure out what's going on. I love how everything is the same color. There's a mass of something down below. And of course, you can realize that's Coruscant, and this is a mass of different capital ships. We see Imperial Star Destroyers. We see Architan's Cruisers. Uh, this is a Victory Star Destroyer down there, which I didn't notice until I watched this a second or third time. We've got Hammerhead Corvettes, CR-90s, just a mass of ships all actually exchanging fire, real explosions off the hull. Uh, there's lots of little details that I notice every time I watch that just really blow me away. Um, and one thing too that I noticed last time I watched is the Mon Calamari ships actually each have a little bit of difference to them, at least the big cruisers. You can kind of tell from this angle that this one's a little bit different shape than this one, uh, and that's just a really awesome detail. But I love how overwhelming the battle is and it takes your eyes a second to really kind of adjust to what's going on. But the speed is incredible, and Chris actually explained to me, Chris Parks, who created the animation, explained that he created a rudimentary game uh, to actually fly and do the basic level of animation. Look at that shot there. He's coming over the Star Destroyer, flipping over the Star Destroyer, just passing this Nebulon B and this Architens and these two Corvettes just exchanging fire with each other. As you can see, Victory Star Destroyers and such, just awesome. MC-75 in the background there. So, some of you may be kind of guessing what happens here because... Again, only a few of you I'm guessing. Uh, he, he says there's a strange energy reading over there. Some really nice facial animations, so I'm going to throw up uh, some behind-the-scenes stuff for that. But yeah, to the speed, um, the diving past the battle. Kind of reminds me of uh, the Battle of Endor here. This isn't the most technically impressive fan film in terms of uh, 
The facial animation is amazing. I'm guessing they use some sort of scan or something. It's one of the most technically impressive in terms of ship models, although they're very, very good. Or in terms of, say, lighting or explosions, although, again, all very, very good. But to me, this best captures the excitement and the speed of Star Wars, the feeling of Star Wars space battles as they appear in the movies. Um, so I'm just going to let this run. I'm partially talking so much so you guys are forced to go watch the full version yourselves. I also really love how he did Coruscant too. It's very similar to Coruscant as it first appeared in concept art. There's a shot at the end that I want to use to talk about that later, but... Just really nice. Like, there's actually a cityscape here. It's not just randomly generated buildings. Uh, another thing, nice detail, is you can clearly tell that the uh, the creator, Chris, was inspired not only by the X-Wing books, but also the video games. Any X-Wing or Squadrons player will recognize this. It's the power distribution screen. It'll come into play in a minute. Uh, of course it will. And we also see a TIE Avenger, which I believe, but I'm not positive, first appeared in the TIE Fighter, uh, the first expansion. But it may have been in the base game, I can't remember. But yeah, just like the speed reminds me of Rogue One as they're flipping through the superstructure on that uh, on the shield gate. But look at this too, just an Imperial Star Destroyer crashing in the background like it's nothing. I actually didn't even notice that the first time I was watching. Apparently, I'm blind. Obviously, Star Killers down there pulling it down with the Force. Um, but that's something even the official Battle of Coruscant from Revenge of the Sith doesn't manage to capture. We see the Invisible Hand crash down, of course, but, I mean, that ship wasn't special. There should have been hundreds of Invisible Hands coming down. Um, but the planet goes pretty much unscathed. MC-75 goes down there, too. I really love the inclusion of the MC-75. Obviously, it's a canon. This is meant to be a sort of alt-universe depiction of a, of a Legends event, but it's still nice to see the ship there. The spin. There you go. Full distribution to lasers. The facial animations are great. I'm curious to how... I should have asked him how he did them. It's really just incredible what, like, a guy... Like, with an office, one or two people can do um, with months of hard work in the technology that's available. But uh, this is really cool. So I'm going to go back just a second. You can see um, that they're coming out over the Senate District. This is something I was talking about. This isn't just random Coruscant. It's depicted somewhat like the movies, but it also, to me, really reminds me of the original concept art for the planet. For those who don't know... Coruscant first appeared in the Thrawn trilogy. That's where it was first named. But the idea of a city-spanning Imperial planet actually first was envisioned for Return of the Jedi, um, where it's called Had Abaddon. And they ended up, for the Thrawn trilogy, taking the idea of that Imperial center, renaming it Coruscant. George Lucas decided to keep the name uh, and then also kind of base it off the concept art and some of the stuff that had come out at the time. But uh, this, to me, just reminds me a lot of the original Had Abaddon concept art with sort of the flats and the structures in the background. But it's also just a very faithful rendition of Coruscant itself. I love the Imperial fleet kind of just holding position over here. I also really like how there's sky traffic in the background here, but above the battle, it's pretty much clear. Like, shit on Coruscant always has to keep going. Like, like that dude in 500 Republica needs his Uber Eats from Dex's, and a little space battle is not going to get in the way of that. At this point, I think I'm going to cut it off and really encourage you guys to watch the rest yourself. There is an absolutely huge moment that's coming up. I don't want to spoil it. I want you guys to go watch through the entire thing with music and kind of watch it yourself. Um, I'm going to talk about a bit more and maybe throw up either some more footage or some concept art. Uh, but as I said, Chris reached out to me and thought I might be interested in his short. Of course I am. Uh, he kind of talks a little bit about the actual technicalities or technical ways, I guess, he made the the, uh, the short film. He mentions that he made a crude game in, I, I believe, Unreal Engine, and then kind of augmented that animation, polished it up, and that's how we got to kind of the final 
amazing animation we get here. He says, all the animation was finished, laid out in Blender, the final rendering as well as the destruction was completed in Houdini using the GPU render redshift. I know some of that doesn't mean much to me, but there's always people asking. Um, he also mentions he knows that Raid Squadron technically wasn't created until after the Cry Toss Trap, which is the, uh, the third novel in the X-Wing trilogy. But my roommate Keith played Wraith Leader in another fan film called Destroyer. Shout out to that. So I wanted him to reprise his role. That's why I smudged the history a little bit in this short. So there you go. Check out the rest of it, guys. If you're one of those people who are saying, we don't get enough Star Wars space battles, complaining, you're 100% you're right. This is a Star Wars space battle. This is an incredible Star Wars space battle. This is something that a hardcore Star Wars fan worked on, decided that his artistic vision was worth more than money, so put Star Wars music on it, knowing that it'd be copyright flagged, and put it out for us. It's important that we as Star Wars fans encourage and support these kinds of work. So we got to get this guy's first video blown up because selfishly, that means hopefully more content. All in all though, Chris, great job on this. As I mentioned, one of my favorite, if not my favorite, Star Wars short films I've seen. And uh, trust me, I'm trying to see if I can skip ahead a little bit um, without spoiling the very ending. But uh, trust me when I say you're going to want to see it. If you're an X-Wing fan, you may already have an idea what's about to happen. But yeah, links down below and in the upper right corner. Star Wars X-Wing by Noble Engine, an amazing first start. I'll let the credits roll again. So Chris Parks plays Wraith 2 as well as actually making the thing. Um, yeah. Hopefully, as I mentioned, Michael Stackpole can see this. I was reminded not only of the actual Battle of Coruscant from that book, but when they're flying through the skyscrapers, I was also reminded of the part where they're going through the skyscrapers in um, in Wedge's Gamble with the Z95s. So shout out to mom and dad as well, and of course the big guy himself. Sorry for the short video. I don't usually do this, but I thought this project was so cool. Um, and, and Chris was just a cool guy to talk to, so... Hope you enjoyed. Until next time, be safe, have a good one, and may the Force be with you. I just want to mention, guys, after recording this, I saw the really terrible news uh, from Texas about the 14 children and the teacher killed. And as someone with kids, uh, especially a kid who's almost elementary school age, that stuff hits me in particular really hard. So I just wanted to, I mean, what can you say? I just wanted to kind of acknowledge it. There's nothing you can say to make it better or to make it, you know, th there's no explanation for stuff like this. I just wanted to kind of acknowledge it and not just upload a normal video on today as if nothing else had happened. We had a, a school shooting or sorry, not a school shooting, a, a rampage style shooting here a few years ago. So I know kind of how it feels like to be in the community when something like, like that happens. So if any of you are in Texas, hopefully you're doing all right, but until next time, guys, just be safe out there. Goodbye.